Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the uh, IATA webinar on One Record Insights. This is uh, episode uh, number six, dedicated to the pilot testing. Your hosts today are Klaas Kort from uh, TB Schenker, who's connectivity manager there, and myself, Arno Lambert, the uh, engagement manager for One Record at IATA. Today's uh, episode is split into uh, four parts. We'll be talking about the current status of the pilots, how to actually join a pilot if you have not done so, uh, all about one record events coming up and how to help you for these pilots. And uh, at the end, we have a, a special uh, guest and roundtable of actual pilot participants who will share their firsthand uh, experience. So as uh, the previous webinars, to participate in the meeting, you can only hear us your microphones are disabled. Uh, we ask you to use the question box to interact with us. You can ask a question at any time and uh, they'll be answered either during the presentation, the panels, or at the end during the Q&A session. This meeting is also recorded for future use. So don't worry if you have to leave, you can always uh, click the link, come back and watch it again. Or you can also go to our website at the.org slash one record uh, you will find all of the previous recordings and pre presentations that have been shown during these webinars. So don't worry, you're not missing a thing. Just before we get started, uh, we will be using uh, Slido. So uh, we uh, request everybody to uh, take their phones, scan the QR code, and uh, join uh, our Slido on uh, one R pilot. And we will kick off with the first question, which we will then address during the pilot. But the most important question, why haven't you joined the pilot so far? Okay, so let's get started. So let's have a look at the current state of the pilots. But before we do that, what are the one record pilots? We've seen before in the previous webinars all about the, uh, the technical specifications, the API, the data model, and that's all theory. And now we have to do Agile and put theory to practice and actually improve it. So that's where the one record pilots come into their own. Basically, they test and fine tune the standards that have been created and improve it. They help develop, as they are the experts in the field, as well the API and the security specifications, see what works, what doesn't work. As one record is new and a different way of working, they help us to develop operational processes and procedures. And as well, in the beginning, to test basic statuses and data exchange to make sure and to validate that the one record data model works. After that, since the basics were tested and proved, we decided to look at how can we expand. And we looked at the priorities depending on the pilots and where it was needed the most. And as the time goes on, the pilots expand and build the internet of logistics. So let's have a look at the world map. Currently, we, uh, we have officially seven uh, locations where we have uh, pilots uh, being tested. That does not mean that all the companies that participate in the pilot are actually based there. They're based all around the world. But this was in 2019 when we started local uh, communities. So as we can see, uh, we pretty much covered the world, except for uh, Latin America and Africa. But in North America, in Europe, Middle East, and Asia Pacific, we had a good representation. And in 2019, they, uh, uh, they set up their own mini communities. And 2020 was all about connecting between these communities and building on the internet of logistics. So, who are these companies? So you've seen this slide before during all of the other webinars and actually during the webinars, it grew. So currently we actually have 42 companies live, but there's 16 more in the pipeline, which aren't shown yet as they're still in the early stages in getting the pilots uh, sorted. That makes it 58 companies. To compare that, at the end of last year, there was only 26. 
So that's a very big difference. And it shows that there is a lot of interest and people coming on board. Fear not, out of the 16 companies, we have good representation, mainly from grand handlers and freight forwarders. 2020 is all about connecting the nodes and expanding. So what are they actually working on? So you've seen in the slide before, it's all about the one record data model. We have the yellow, that is the base, everybody can do it. And now with these pilots, we ask them to look at each of these uh, blue boxes and see how the, you can help and improve this. Everybody's welcome to join and to uh, bring their own specialty and expertise and everybody's more than welcome to participate. So you've seen about the pilots, what's actually happening, but then how can you actually join these? For that, we go to the website. This website, I'm sure you've seen it many times. What we've done is a one-stop shop. We've created a website where you can actually have all of the resources at your fingertips with one click. So if there's uh, an important link to bookmark, it's the one on the bottom of your screen right now. So what we've done is for the pilots, we created a specific tab, the pilots tab, where you can actually see the predefined use cases. So these are the use cases that are currently going on, they're PDF documents, and you can see the, the companies that are working on it. So if one of these uh, use cases uh, appeals to you, please click on it and get in touch with us and we can help you put into contact with them. Or maybe it can give you an idea to create your own. We've actually had uh, a few airports that looked at uh, this website and saw that uh, one of the use cases actually appealed to them, but they wanted to do their own. So they actually used it and they modified it to their specifications and uh, are, are doing it. As well, you have all the resources, like I said, of presentations where you can get more in-depth information on the API, how it works, on the security, and on one record in general. As well, there is the link to contact us as if you want to do your own use case or you would like to join a use case, we encourage you to contact us so that we can see what best fits you, how we can help you, and to accelerate your adoption of one record. So once you click on one of those use cases, we have a, uh, so this is a template of the, uh, the, the pilot project profile. But basically it shows you with green boxes, which are the, um, the topics that they are looking at. So on the data model, you can see that this particular uh, use case would focus on the quantology and they would also like to integrate interactive cargo and pharmaceuticals. So this is just an example. So you have to read them like this. And as well, there is an implementation roadmap. So they would basically show what they're looking at doing and how fast they want to do and what are the next steps. So please have a look at it and get in touch with us. Additionally, we do a lot of communication. So uh, we do quarterly news bulletins where you get a quick snapshot of our uh, three streams, which is the data model, the API and security, as well as the pilot projects. You also get a quick what's new and the, uh, the dashboard on where we are, what we're planning on doing and where we're heading, as well as all upcoming events and uh, information to register for the future events. We also organize uh, conference calls for the three streams, which you're more than welcome to join. But for that, please contact us and bring your expertise along. And as well, we do publications, such as the uh, quick tech insights and the white papers. So this is the final one, episode six. We had uh, a lot of uh, good episodes on the data model, ontologies, how it all works. And this one is all about tying it all together. We also uh, create uh, few insights, as I was mentioning before. If you click on the link, it'll take you right there. And they are written by our, our good uh, one record developer, Andra Blash, who uh, created very nice documentation, very readable for everybody, and also created a few white papers. Next one is coming soon. 
and uh, we look forward to reading that one. But we've seen lots of information. We've seen that there is a GitHub. We have events to boost our knowledge, but how can I actually join it? What do I need to do? So coming soon, after uh, this webinar, we have a few things coming up, which is a one record playbook, a multilateral uh, data agreement, and a developer portal. So let's go into more detail. So, so the one record implementation playbook is very simple, just like we did for eAirWebill. It's a document which contains all the implementation steps. So let's give you some snapshots on how to uh, uh, onboard with one record. What are the steps you need to do? And basically we've created a checklist whereby all you need to do is follow the steps and start with one record. As always, if you have any point, any problems, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always more than happy to, to, to engage with our, uh, our pilot participants and offer any help that you require. After that, we created the multilateral data agreement. This will be coming onto our website very shortly. And basically, it's, uh, if you know the multilateral e bill agreement, it's the same mechanism whereby We've done a non-disclosure agreement, but we reinvented it, whereby instead of every company having to sign with all of their participants, we've created a new version using the same mechanism whereby every company signs with IATA, and that by natural means, that, you, that means you sign with all the other parties that have signed. So you only need to sign once to basically be covered with everybody that signed is a non-disclosure agreement. But more information on that once it's live in a couple of weeks. And of course, there is the GitHub where we have all the uh, standard specifications. If there is uh, one slide that's really important to remember, it's this one. Basically, visit our website and get in touch with us and we'll put you in touch with other use cases or help you actually create your own use case. So now let's look at the events. What do we have? Well, we actually have three events. So this is the final episode of the One Record Insights. So you've seen all of these. The next one coming up is our hackathon. So the hackathon will go into more detail just after this. And then we have our digital cargo conference that we always have in September every year. Uh, the important thing is all of these are all digital, they're all action-packed, and most important, they're all complimentary. There is no fees. So once again, send us an email and we'll send you all the information to register for it. So let's have a look at the hackathon. So what is a hackathon? It's a mix of hacking and a marathon. So basically, uh, this year it's different. We've done a few editions before. This is going to be the third one. So it's going to be happening uh, between the 11th and the 13th of September. And the twist this time, it's going to be IATA's first fully digital, fully virtual hackathon. So you can do it from your living room couch, on your computer, no problem. There is no travel required. You can just do it like that. So. As I said, it's a marathon. So it's open to everybody around the world. There is no restrictions. What we're going to be doing is we're going to have multiple challenges. There's actually going to be three. And as I was saying, a marathon, it's because there's 28 hours of coding. So we start off on a Friday where we do some networking and we explain the rules of the game. We also explain the challenges and everybody gets to ask their questions to the experts, if you have any. And then on Saturday morning, that's when we start off the 28 hours. So it will finish on Sunday afternoon. I'm saying this Geneva time, because we're based in Geneva. And then in the afternoon on Sunday, then everybody does their live demos in front of a panel of seven uh, judges who are from the industry. So there's no IATA staff. And they will judge your ideas based on certain criteria. Uh, there is a prize money to be involved. So we have a $2,000 cash prize, which is uh, graciously uh, sponsored by Riga Software. And as well, 
for the runners up, we're doing uh, additional prizes, which is the Innovation Engine membership. More on that later, but in very simple terms, uh, we're looking at doing uh, something like an incubator where we will help uh, the runners up and the first prize to uh, enhance their product, get in touch with industry, and uh, make it a viable product. And during the hackathon, there's also workshops where if you have no experience in one record, we will have a dedicated slot where you can talk to our, our experts, see how to get connected, what needs to be done. And as well, let's not forget, maybe some people don't have all the right air cargo experience. So we also do a quick cargo 101, so people can uh, not miss out on this. But with that, you need to create a team. So the teams, it's minimum two people, Maximum six. As I said, they can be located anywhere. And it's a mix of developers and business experts. And of course, no previous experience is required. So you have the option. If you already know friends and family who want to create a team, by all means, send us an email and you can register as a team. But fear not. If you don't have a team, let us know. And then we will to sort of online dating, where we can match uh, people together depending on your skills required and what you're looking for. So don't worry. If you feel like joining, hackathon, register, and we'll take care of it. But at least just to give you an idea, we did uh, two previous ones, one in Geneva in 2018, which is a big success, and one in Madrid. And what's important to note is the hackathons that we do is all about uh, being uh, a jumping board to spring forward for one record and to actually create a product that can help you to expand your pilots, to do more. So, and it, it's always good to be used later on. So please, by all means, get in touch with us and you're more than welcome to join. With that, we have the Digital Cargo Conference. That's our next event. So this brings leaders from around the world to discuss and share visions on global uh, digital cargo within the logistics industry. Um, it's more high level where you can hear about innovation and strategy from uh, great industry leaders. And as well, it's a chance for the hackathon winners to actually present their solution to the audience. So more information on this uh, to come very shortly. But uh, yes, keep uh, end of September uh, free. I will do uh, a series uh, of uh, webinars just like this to replace the Digital Cargo Conference. And that's not all. So we've done the events, we've done the One Record website and the GitHub repository, but we still engage on another way, and that's through standard development boot camps. So during the boot camps, we get experts from around the world to actually bring their expertise. So you're not required to, to join a pilot if you don't want to, if you prefer to just bring your expertise, you can. So everything is optional. But of course, we highly recommend the participants to, to join all of the events because that will only help boost your knowledge and engage more with the industry. So um, yes, we've done a few API and security ones. We've done data models and we've also done pilot boot camps. Uh, these are the pictures from when we actually were allowed to do face-to-face. -face, so before the lockdown. Now we've been holding them uh, virtually, which has been very useful, and we've been getting a lot of traction and moving along. So if you feel like joining one of these boot camps, let us know, reach out, and we'll engage with you. So now we're on to the fourth part, which is the, uh, the pilot participation roundtable. So with that, I will let uh, the microphone and the floor over to uh, class. class. Thanks, Arno, for handing over. So my name is Klaas Kurz. Quick introduction. I'm working as a carrier integration manager for DB Schenker. Uh, same time, I'm supporting and uh, helping Arno as the industry lead for the pilot implementation. So we both make sure that the pilots are running properly. So uh, today, with me, I would like to introduce um, AJ from Qatar Airways. AJ is a project manager 
at Qatar Airways and he's involved in a few of the pilots that we are running. Arno already showed that there are now more than 60 participants, so we decided now to um, have two of them in this panel. Um, secondly, we have a very special guest. Uh, we have one of the pioneers and drivers of e-airway builds and paperless cargo. We have Jackson Chan, who was a cargo manager at uh, Cassie Pacific and retired this year. Uh, but last year he was um, highly involved in the one record implementation at Cassie Pacific and therefore can give us some great insights on that. So let's welcome the two of them. Um, before we actually head into our discussion, uh, we would also like to get some feedback from you as, a, as the audience. First of all, as a little reminder, um, please use our Q and answer, question and answer box and um, we try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and also we would like to have a look at our first uh, question. So we see that um, most of you guys are already involved into a pilot, but the, the other 30% of it um, states that they lack information on the topic. We hope that the last five uh, webinars and also this webinar will help you to get the information that is needed to join a pilot or to create a new pilot out of that. Having said that, we also want to have information on a on a second question, which is uh, where are the main points on your digitalization journey towards paperless operations? So is it missing shipment details when it is needed, legal requirements from authorities or rate distribution? So I would like to have the answers from you as the audience while we are talking to each other. So AJ, um, why don't we start the discussion and um, can you explain us how you started with your pilot and what were your first steps? AJ, you need to unmute. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good afternoon, good evening and good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, just a brief intro about myself. I uh, take care of uh, cargo e initiatives within uh, Qatar Airways Cargo, uh, primarily the e uh, related projects. Of course, we support uh, the e available e freight uh, and the um, other e initiatives of IATA, um, primarily the global key accounts, uh, connectivity, customs connectivity, etc. So uh, that's what my role uh, is as far as Qatar uh, Airways Cargo is concerned. Um, uh, the first steps, um, I believe, um, you know, we 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 uh, as Qatar Airways Cargo have been on the forefront uh, to support all IATA initiatives, uh, be it EAVIL, EFRAID, piece level tracking, XML. Uh, that's the whole point of you know us being um, available or uh, participating in the. Uh, groups like uh, e cargo working group, uh, the uh, cargo messaging working group, or the uh, task force, uh, the one record task force as well. Um, for us, uh, the uh, pilot was primarily uh, aimed at the first one, which is in 2019, was primarily aimed at testing the capability uh, to see if the one record concept uh, itself makes sense. Um, of course, it made sense to us. Uh, that's what we demonstrated at uh, the task force last year. Uh, we actually decided to start small uh, to have the pilot done between our own um, a few companies, subsidiaries. Um, this way, we avoid any external, you know, uh, party dependency. We wanted to provide some quick results as that, as such. Um, and anyways, uh, where th that point of time, the data model was not pretty matured enough as well uh, to actually uh, go and do with an external integration. So um, our uh, start off for the pilot, the steps that we took was that we sought a few uh, concept approval internally. 
uh, with the senior management. Uh, I think that's an important part. Your uh, organization do, needs to be on board with you mm-hmm. uh, when when you are you know uh, seeking uh, such a big project um, uh, approvals. Um, and this, of course, this was done on the basis of uh, you know few documentation that we received from IIT as well, uh, supporting docs from their side. Um, second step was that you know we consented to the pilot participation um, once the concept approval was received. Uh, we had the budget approvals done internally. Uh, I think that's also important. You need uh, a bit of arrangements within the organization to get this uh, or resource arrangement to get this organized. Um, simultaneously, we had the working group formed, um, which which is also important with uh, important stakeholders within the organization. To be on board with you uh, to help you out with the whole project. Um, then uh, we had, uh, you know, a few small steps of uh, schedule uh, planning, the scope planning. We had our uh, plan documented with milestones, um, which primarily involved design and development of our own one record server, um, uh, integration with the core operational systems, if it, that was feasible. Uh, integration with uh, and and testing of use cases as well. So these were the first basic few steps that we took uh, to organize the uh, you know the pilot uh, run from our side. Thank you very much, AJ, for this insight on your first step. Um, so Jackson, over to you. First of all, thank you that you are joining today uh, as a retired person of this great industry. So uh, can you share some? Insights from your side when you started with uh, Casa Pacific on the on the journey to one record. Certainly, Klaus, thank you. <clears throat> uh, up, I think um, after my retirement, I can still share my knowledge, own knowledge and experience with the group and the industry. So um, I still remember 10 years ago, I introduced the year with the sentence, uh, one single Accepting process, and few years later, uh, we also do roll out the way we moving the folder pouch. As I mentioned before, e every bill is the first step, and the e way is the second step. Then what will be the, our final step? I think one record is our final step. So my first step is to ensure the one record platform can move the cargo data as well as the e-document together with the cargo can be assessed anywhere and anytime. That's my first step to make sure this one record platform can meet our final objective. My second step is to ensure the business process. The business process from shipper, folder, airline, warehouse, and custom authority can also assess the data e-document anytime, anywhere they want in order to removing the paper documents. And after that, I, I work very closely with the global logistics Hong Kong company, what we call just Hong Kong company, to build the one record platform for Hong Kong and also Cafe Pacific. Mm-hmm. During, during the system development time, it takes long. It, it may take six months to one year to develop this platform. During this development time, I do a promotion of this one record idea to the Hong Kong, UK, China custom and government, and also the poor there and shipper in Hong Kong to get their support. And that's what I did, that is what I did last year as my first step on one record platform. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jackson, for, for this insight. Uh, AJ, you described uh, how you started your, your pilots, right? Um, can you give us more insights on what you did as a pilot and uh, what the implementation status is right now? Yes, I I think I can show that via the slides uh, if I can share. Yes, please do so. It's easier to follow. I hope you can see the slides now. Yeah, yes, I can see. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 
as i said i mean we we support all the e initiatives uh, from kataiwe side so uh, the basic question that used to come to us uh, is that um, uh, why are we engaged in the pilot right so uh, that's that's something that as an organization we need to think about as well as to uh, what is the reason that we engage ourselves in the pilot um this is uh, something to do with uh, digitalization with the industry and this is something that we cannot avoid uh, this will happen for sure um customer demands this and uh, you know uh, they demand easy flow of data which is the need of the r uh more visibility is needed more transparency is needed um uh, data quality is needed uh, quick and easy plug and play connectivity is needed uh, these are the whole reasons that you know we cannot avoid the digitalization concept today um uh, second uh, aspect that we can look at and there are these are very few that we have listed i am sure there would be more actually available uh, for us to think about uh but from a, a second aspect perspective the uh, global platform was the requirement of the r actually to connect with the industry stakeholders um a platform uh, that is trustworthy and operates with one standard with proper apis and security mechanisms which would cover the legal requirements and the documents in the current world uh, i think these were the important aspects that we uh need to think of before we engage and why we engage these are the reasons good enough um one of the aspect can be the agile uh, supply chain that we look forward to uh actually one record will uh, lead to new and dynamic supply chain configurations i'm sure with real time information coming in where speed and agility would be the key today we wait for hours before data gets changed or updates are uh, received from respective uh, you know stakeholders um at each level the data is touched uh, the chances of discrepancies becomes higher uh, the overwriting or changes in changing in the previous uh, information um i think one record would ensure that appropriate data ownership clarity is there access control mechanisms are there for data and uh, you know it would be available in real time um another aspect that we can look at is an ultimate standard standard which we need to look forward to after xml i know we have xml in place today but um we have to keep uh, i mean this is uh, meeting probably the immediate needs uh, but since data requirement is changing um the messaging formats and standards automatically need to evolve further to the further levels of uh, i can say one record then um and another aspect can be uh, uh, regulatory requirements which you know we want to 100% comply as business owners um in the supply chain that's one important aspect um uh, with with regards to regulatory and the authority requirements uh this takes care of the safety and legal requirements we don't want to fly goods that are not really safe and uh, basically illegal to fly uh, one record would support you know advanced cargo information which helps in identifying such shipments in real time Okay. so i think these are basic uh, uh, ideas or concepts that we <clears throat> had in mind uh, before engagement um, uh, why we want to engage further with this um, i will just uh, glance through the pilot that we presented last year um, uh, the demonstration that we did i will not go into the details of it uh, but just to brief you uh, what what was the concept uh, and and what what was the idea behind the pilot uh here the um we did a role play model uh we displayed the real role play model actually uh the scope messages were primarily the data elements of fwb and the fsus um so what has happened is uh, under the role play model we uh, we did it within our teams within our subsidiaries which is our gha acted as a customer because they have the counter shipments coming in mm. um our gha uh, the origin gha who's capable of one record and has a one record server as well so we built a one record server for them as well as one for qr so that is the way we went ahead uh, to do the flow so um the flow was very simple customer sends the information to the one record server um this in turn via the qr systems uh, is uh, you know diverted to the uh, one record server of the gha the gha has the information to accept the shipment the shipment is once physically arrives uh, he is accepted the shipment he is sending the fsu messages back to the one record platform of qr 
um, which is the basic uh, in sequence uh, FSUs that we send. Um, and this is actually uh, received by the customer through the one record server itself. And then um, once it reaches the destination, uh, we had got a destination GHA, which was not really one record compliant, uh, but then they were still on legacy systems as, as it is shown in the figure here. What they okay. did is they send the regular updates to our system. We then converted into, um, you know, into the JSONs and sent it to the one record platform for the customer for uh, visibility purpose. So that was very simple flow that uh, we uh, demonstrated. Uh, we did some patch updates uh, demonstration last year in 2019. Um, uh, basically, you know, the milestones that we had defined was these that you see on the screen now. Uh, it was a short, uh, you know, period that we wanted to do this. Uh, as you know, uh, we had decided about the pilots only in April 2019, and uh, it was very short time that we uh, got to actually engage. So this uh, idea of doing it within the organization, within the subsidiaries worked. Of course, if you, if you have uh, great partners, you can really, uh, and if there is time, of course, you can engage with outside uh, parties as well. Uh, but this is the simple concept that we uh, followed. Uh, so we we were able to meet the timelines as far as the pilot uh, um, milestones were concerned. Um, I'll just come back to the current uh, situation, uh, which is um, what are the pilots that we do? Uh, we are doing for the year 2020. Um, mm -hmm. So th these are two pilots that we are engaged in. Um, one is with uh, um, uh, our customer Agility and its CCS partner, which is Champ. Um, so uh, here also the basic flow is that Agility sends the information, the plan, the planned flow is that Agility sends information to Champ uh, systems and uh, Champ system converts into its um, uh, in JSON formats and sends it to uh, the server, one record server, and which flows into our system. And then we have uh, assume that our uh, GHA at the origin is not on one record. In this case, the destination GHA is on one record. Uh, so we give the traditional info back to the GHA for acceptance purpose. And same way, the flow of message of FSUs uh, go back to the customer. So these, this is the basic uh, concept that we have engaged in, um, uh, the, uh, basically planned in. Um, and, and these are operating in two phases. Um, but of course, uh, we have also uh, submitted this as our plan. Uh, the implementation roadmap is there. Uh, we also see that uh, the data model uh, aspects that we adopt here would be airline core ontology. And then we have the API and security aspects that is also uh, you know, highlighted, which ones we are planning to actually accommodate. Um, and the second, uh, second pilot is also almost similar, except for the fact that there would be few uh, customers uh, of uh, freight forward, uh, sorry, a few customers of you are involved here, which will again be channelized through uh, our uh, CCS partner, which is CCN. Um, and then uh, the flow follows as far as the FSU uh, messages is concerned back to the customer. So uh, these are two pilots that we are engaged in. Uh, again, uh, the uh, aspects of data model and API security remains the same. Uh, the implementation plan almost remains the same. Um, I want to stress upon the fact that yes, we are a little bit slow on these uh, milestones uh, due to the only reason that the situation is not uh, really favorable. But yes, but we, we move slowly. Uh, we have almost a one month and a half delay probably. Uh, but then yes, uh, I think we are looking at the overall objective of achieving this uh, by the year end. So uh, that's where it, it stands as far as the pilot status is concerned. Um, I'll just also uh, give you our overview of, you know, what we feel as stakeholders would be the benefit. Uh, I hope this helps the crowd uh, that is there on the call. Um, uh, basically, as, as stakeholders, um, and I will not run through all the points that is listed there, uh, but uh, from our perspective, I think, um, uh, what we are uh, looking at is that it primarily uh, eliminates the requirement for documents, yes, uh, and it's the data that would be in lead. Um, we are thinking about you know annual savings on stationery, on fuel. Uh, you can also think about uh, you know potential savings in terms of customs filing cost network wide. 
probably uh, you might also uh, think about uh, you know calculating your uh, penalties that you incur as an airline uh, worldwide when you have these kind of discrepancies happening with customs um, these are like you know pool of standardized messages for exchange ensures consistency of data you know across platforms um, uh, the it's it's dynamic supply chain that we are looking at uh, a real time data available to all stakeholders the quality of data that we receive would be certainly better than what you have currently available i think these are few uh, high level items that i can think of as as you know industry stakeholders uh, but i'm sure there would be more uh, stuff that we can actually list down here um, on the regulatory side which is on the right side of the screen uh you will see that uh, uh from from primarily from the customs perspective what exactly are they trying are they looking at or what's a gain for them is that it would facilitate e freight and pre clearances uh these are things that you know always customs would look forward to um this moves away from the traditional you know rigid message standards um will facilitate the direct connectivities uh, between customs and you know us directly mm -hmm. um uh, of course uh, facilitates the global projects like uh, you know digital corridor uh, which is a new concept uh, but then uh, it will bring in more transparency and probably enhanced customs revenues so uh, this is our view as far as the advantages are concerned and uh, i have also given a status update of the pilots which we are engaged in uh, were engaged in 2019 as well as the 2021s Thank you, AJ. That was really great insights on what you did. Um, and I think it was very well explained. Um, just to also move now to uh, another question to the audience. Um, we would like to get also an information or some insights from, from you. Uh, and the question is, um, what is the key success factor for the implementation? Um, is it engaging with authorities, start with the local heroes, or try the low hanging fruits first and ignore complexity? Um, this is what we would like to get answered within the next minutes. And while we are doing that, we would also like to have a first look at um, at the previous questions um, to see where the complexity is and to see how these how this poll was involved. Um, so we try to get that on screen now. So the first question while we are seeing that. Oh, class, you're asking me lots of things. <laughs> I can't do uh, multiple questions okay. at the same time. So um, to come back to the why you haven't, I can't bring it onto the onto the screen, but uh, why you haven't joined um, the the pilot so far. Um, I'm trying to find the actually the majority said they already joined the pilot. We had 78% saying they already joined, which is good news. OK, good. So uh, now heading over to. To Jack to Jackson. Um, the issues that we already mentioned before, missing shipment data and uh, legal requirements from customs, uh, which of these issues did you look at when you started your pilot and how did you first of all start your pilot before? Oh, class, thank you for the question, I think. What we need to take care of is both, uh, both data and also the legal requirement. I think I can do my presentation at this moment and then share my thought with the audience. So let's waiting for the um, question two and then let the audience answer first and Ala can run my presentation on my behalf. Yes, thank you for that, Jackson. So we can see your presentation now. Oh, you can see? Yep. Okay. Oh, as uh, Alas told me there will be a 20 second delay, so I better catch up. Um, it's okay, Jackson, now. go for it. Okay, slide one. Okay, uh, after the year review, e and I think the paperless cargo will be the next 
one common goal for the air cargo industry. That's why one record is our future solution. Uh, next slide, Alan. Yes. Okay, next slide, I want to highlight uh, IATA has always done an excellent job on episode, episode one to five. What they have covered is very intensive and detailed on the telco side, on the data security, API, and also the data model. Uh, as a business manager, we can uh, put all this work to our technical team instead of uh, the business world manager to get this. So what I'm I really looking forward is if you are the world manager for your company for DRAB, e-cargo, and paperless cargo, then what you can do with the one that system. Next slide. So what, yep. what one, one makeup can give us is the data model specification, API specification, and security specification. This is our future standard introduced by the industry and IT. Next slide. Next slide, yep. hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go. Uh, this yeah, this diagram so the uh, one record system is a system to so system data sharing and exchange platform. In the future, there will be many one record platform uh, in the industry, and the IT people will take care of this uh, for the data exchange and sharing part. Next slide, please. I think we need to cater every generation. Uh, if you uh, the technical person 20 years ago or uh, or 10 years ago, we are very usually um, using Excel files or what we call CSV campaign for the data exchange. And also the people can use cargo in as a standard to exchange the every bill, house review data, and the house manifest data. And a few years ago, ITER has introduced the cargo XML. For the new generation programmer, they do not want to do Excel file, they do not want to do cargo in. They were, they were more pro prefer to use XML. So nowadays, uh, API is getting more popular. So the one record JSON file will be our future. I don't, I don't think the programmer today would like to do cover in Excel file anymore. The people, young generation, they prefer to use data as their future language. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, this slide, I want to show you um, the airline core authority is the core one record data. Uh, with this one record data model, including URD checking, piece level checking, cargo distribution. You can see this is a, it's a data warehouse, but can be accessed by external. Many airlines and water, you may have the internal data warehouse, which is not shared among other external partners. But I want to highlight this one record data or platform cannot replace your existing cargo system. You still require to have a cargo system you still have to require a sales and distribution uh, platform. You still require a cargo IQ platform. But the essential data will be transferred, exchanged, and stored in the one record platform in the future. Next slide. As, as you already answered, our first problem in the digitization 70% of them are lacking of data, and 30% of them are legal requirements. Then uh, how we can use one record to cover both issues? So first of all, we need to understand why we still require the document, paper document today. Uh, the folder and the shipper prepare for the every view house manifest, the folder pouch, the declaration letter, medium battery letter, security forms, and some cargo they require license, service, certificate, or car list. This mainly for the government 
security and custom purpose. Mm -hmm. in, in the future, if our platform cannot provide the same, then we cannot do papers. Next slide, please. So the question is whether achieving 100% paperless, is it possible? If it's possible, what will be the solution? So next slide, please. Yeah. Our future one record platform is our solution. As you can see, the air core data more data data schema ontology will contain all the major cargo data like today. Uh, it will have the area view, house manifest, house review data, inverse second data. That we already exchange them to all the or all, all the majority of the government customs like the advanced cargo information, we always send them the data in early advanced stage. And also for custom clearance, we always send most of uh, the custom clearance are cleared by the electronic data instead of the paper. But we need to consider the remaining document, like the border post, which contains the invoice packages and house review. If the shipment on the left hand side have a license, then we need to make sure all these documents are go with our data, which can be accessed by external custom, external order, and also the consign. And the second example is if your shipment has a permit, then you also have to ship with the permit, which can be accessed by, accessed by the custom if they want to check. And the right hand side is the most simple one, it's only with the every data house manifest and the folder pouch will contain the invoice packages and how so view. These are the few examples I want to share, make it as simple as possible. Our future one maker platform will look like this. It's not only contain data. Initially, it will contain the new document as well. Next slide, please. So how to start? So first of all, I think the industry as an airline uh, or also like Shanka, or agility, they want to uh, to build up a one record platform by themselves, or they look for a vendor like uh, just Hong Kong, CCN, Tram, you can see from the presentation example, to subscribe to their available service. And then after you have created a platform, then you can work with closely with the custom and government department to uh, use this single window platform and also use this one record platform to access the data and associate e document anywhere, anytime when the custom or the government department operation hour is want to access the data. There will be four methods very common in the future to, uh, when the custom or security department want to access the one record platform. The first option is, is they can scan your barcode label on the cargo uh, cargo box. If they scan the barcode label, they can see, they can get the very good number. Uh, with your IT provider, they can easily translate this very good number where will be the one record store in the world. For example, if it's um, Qatar Airways, if it's Qatar every good number, then once the, um, the, once the application scan this cycle, then it will translate to a URL, URL which to, to guide linked to the QR Cutter Airways one record platform, which you can access the e data as well as the e document for this human. The second option will be a QR code. When we scan the QR code, actually it can immediately translate to URL and then where is the one record located? And where's the one thing of like a platform? Uh, the, the, the software the, uh, will guide you to get the document and data. The third method is the uh, mobile app. So many border, many IT provider, many airlines will create this app, API uh, mobile app by themselves. And through this mobile app, you can just type in the average number or scan the barcode or scan the QR code then you can see the e-data and e-document over your phone. That is the third common approach. 
when we talk to the, to the custom, the custom say, oh, actually, um, in the warehouse, our people will use mobile apps. They can use an uh, iPad. But in our office, we can, can we use our own computer? The answer is yes. And in the future, the one laptop platform can also be assessed by the um, by your company at PC, the customer, the custom piece as well. They go go into internet, go to, to your one laptop platform, type in the every blue number, then they can see the e data and e document for specific shipment for current for specific for security check as well. This will be the future one laptop platform. Assess method. Next slide, sir, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, the common goal objective are uh, what we need to do together. First of all, we need to store the shipment details and the electronic document into this uh, one record storage. And then every airline, every border in your location, you need to work closely with your local custom and government to support this one record as single version of two and do not ask for paper. Paper is only an exception. And in the future, if every airline has their mobile app and then the custom has to install many mobile apps, one for QR, one for the dancer, one for cafe specific, I don't think it works like this. So that's why we need the technical team work together and uh, to make sure in each location, the, the, there will be one mobile app for custom. Uh, for example, in Hong Kong, in UK, in Qatar, custom, they can use the, just use the same mobile app provided by Lufthansa, Cafe, or Qatar in that location. The mobile app can access multiple airline one makeup platforms. That can be easily enabled by our, our technical team. That is, that is technical feasible. So with that, if, if we have the one that can perform in the future, we can solve the lab data and also to prepare the legal requirement in the future. That's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson, for these, this great presentation and the great words on paperless cargo. Before we head into our last part of the of the panel, actually, um, we might have just a quick look at the at the last poll and how that evolved. Um, yes. So um, unfortunately, I can't show the results, but uh, luckily uh, I used <laughs> my phone to take a picture of it. So for the second question, what are the main pain points on your digitalization journey towards paperless operations? Mm -hmm. uh, the top answer at 68% was missing shipment details when it is needed. Okay. It was followed by 26% as legal requirements from authorities and 5% on rate distribution. So the big leader was missing shipment details when it is needed. Okay, I, th I think Jackson already provided a, a great overview how that, uh, how that can be done with getting rid of paper and uh, sharing data whenever it is needed. Um, so looking at the, uh, at the next poll, uh, the top answer is try the low-hanging fruits first and ignore complexity. I think that was excellently shown by uh, Qatar Airways how that can be done because they started internally and excluded all external parties for the time being and then um, made the pilot bigger and included also external ones. Um, for the Second answer is uh, engage with authorities and also then start with uh, local heroes. Um, we are in a lucky position that we have two local heroes here in that panel. One is uh, Jackson and the other one is obviously AJ. Um, so my question maybe first to Jackson is, how did you engage with customs in, in Hong Kong and also then later in, uh, in UK? And what was the uh, reaction on this, uh, on this technical implementation and also on the way we want to implement one records? Uh, yeah, I think every home carrier 
uh, they have a very good relationship with their local customs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's for sure. So our customer is working very closely with the airline. So after uh, my my one night cost solution design is complete, I actually uh, set up several meetings with the Hong Kong customs. So I share with them, okay, today we only pass you the airway bill and house manifest data. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there will be about more than 90% human already auto clear. Then how to handle the remaining percentage without paper? Then I, I share with them the future one record. They can use the future uh, Hong Kong mobile apps to assess mm-hmm. the other document like the uh, license permit and also the um, invoice packing information. Actually, the Hong Kong custom very pleased and very support, supportive to this idea. Uh, we also discussed, okay, if airline and warehouse provide you this uh, mobile apps, what else do you require? What is our requirement? Uh, the Hong Kong custom actually uh, shared with us uh, frankly. They say, okay, what we really need in the warehouse is the, um, the inter- internet access. You provide us the internet access. Actually, uh, they will provide the government to use their own iPad. I have iPad. Mm-hmm. If they if they use their own iPad, they can control the the people their their officer cannot send out the data using their iPad because they have internal control. And they also share with us they have an internal office, which the office will be be assess all the human in, coming into Hong Kong and provide the clearance. And that office they will require internal access. Uh, going in directly into one record system instead of using mobile apps. So that's why after the discussion, we provide them the, the uh, internet access to our system as well. Um, yeah, I think Hong Kong custom is very supportive and happy about this solution and looking forward to this. And we also talked to the uh, Hong Kong government single window project team as well in the field for the future. Uh, we discussed with them or how can we ensure the license and permit upload by the folder is a true copy, right? Mm-hmm. So Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, they are very advanced. Uh, in the future, when the government uses the license permit, they have both the validation code and a QR code where the airline can verify that is the true copy. I'm not sure whether other countries have the similar thinking for the government side as well that we can explore in the future. Uh, after meeting with Hong Kong, we also share the same concept with UK custom. Uh, they are all well, same, same response like Hong Kong custom. They are very supportive and very happy about this. I think that is what the local custom response. I want other airlines to do the same in their home country to get this moving. That's my answer. Uh, thank you, Jackson. Very good. Um, AJ, do you have anything to add from Qatar side? Uh, Jackson just presented the the outcome of uh, discussions with Hong Kong and and UK. So, do you have any experience with Qatar or any other uh, customs authority? I think uh, we are as well on similar lines as far as the uh, support uh, from the Qatar customs is concerned. Uh, but yes, I mean, we have to still reach there as far as Hong Kong uh, customs uh, developments is concerned because um, they have already got app in place and, you know, a few other developments which uh, we still have to reach. But uh, from our perspective, um, Qatar customs perspective, this uh, they have been very supportive. Uh, you may already know that they have implemented sing- Qatar uh, si- uh, customs single window uh, since year 2011, actually. Uh, so the 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 um, you know the foresight is there. Uh, they already are you know looking forward to uh, complete uh, e implementation. Um, they have implemented with us uh, uh, the e available, the e house available, e house manifest, e e manifest in Qatar. Um, currently, the pilots that are being done for e freight and customs pre clearance have already been a success as well. Uh, there is already work in progress to change a law uh, to facilitate overall electronic uh, transactions or business, um, and this would include our transactions as well. 
um and as far as our relationship as kadaev is with uh, qatar customs uh, is concerned it has been very uh, cordial uh, uh, we have a representative in the national committee uh, that is qatar has okay. got a representative in the national committee for qatar uh, uh, for customs clearance system uh, which also facilitates the cross border trade uh so this representative is nominated by committee to actually implement all e initiatives in the state of qatar uh so it's it's uh, it's it's a good thing that it is uh, qatar airways representative who's doing this um uh, including qr there are like you know 12 other uh, entities which are part of this committee uh, this includes all ministries uh, involved in the clearance of goods as well as the government organizations like qatar petroleum or sea port authority etc so it's a big thing that you know um, uh, uh, we are part of national committee as well uh, from one record perspective the uh, 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 the positive part is that qatar customs agrees to the concept and i see there is immense interest from their side primarily since this would uh, once fully active it reduces their burden as well um, uh, you take it from a risk assessment perspective or uh, reducing the workload by having the concepts of e freight and pre clearances in place um or maybe on the customs revenues as well so uh, they foresee this as a concept facilitating digital corridor in future uh, which is of their interest uh, to know industry actually for them to know the industry uh, developments they had also participated with us in the digital cargo conference last year so i mean all in all um, uh, we have support uh, we have few initiatives uh, leaning towards uh, one record um, uh, as far as one record concept is concerned there are still um, uh, uh, things to be done from our side with customs um, but uh, as we had also stressed in in our uh, task force uh, meetings um, that uh, participation of customs in such initiative is of primary importance uh we have been stressing uh in the in the task force each participant uh which is pilot participant must check with their home base customs to engage by showing you know uh, the benefits that they can gain as we did for qatar customs as well uh we have demonstrated uh, our pilot to them we have given our uh, feedback as far as the engagement is concerned so uh, i'm sure with with the transparency and real time info that they can avail it would make absolute sense for them to actually you know uh, uh, bring in important uh, stakeholders like them on board actually yeah thank you aj and also thank you jackson i think it was very uh, or is this very clear that uh, engagement with customs is a crucial point of the whole implementation of run record um Jackson now as a final word from your side before we head over to the question and answer session you already talked a lot about the, the future and where you see one record and you as an insider of the of the industry but now outside of this real working world uh, where do you see one record and what should be the main targets for us to fulfill uh, my answer is um, in the future there will be many one record platform available either from the border side the airline or the IT provider so as you can see the um, one record can achieve more purpose than only paperless cargo they can achieve the future yield piece level checking the cargo distribution including marketplace and how to do the sales of the cargo but my main target again after the airbnb cargo in free i think the main target for for us will be the paperless cargo uh okay. as one record uh air cargo come and go in coming years that's my main target thank you very much jackson and thanks again also aj for your for your insights on the pilots and with that i would like to hand over again to arno and let's see are there any questions that we can answer right now thank you very much uh, class aj and uh, jackson so actually we've had quite a lot of questions uh, a few of them were already uh, answered during the panel so uh, let's start with sorry i'm looking a bit beside the questions we'll take that one no nope. uh, so uh, actually it's from uh, matthias 
and it's uh, addressed to AJ. With regards to regulatory requirements and the current impact on Cargo Imp, Cargo IMP, and Cargo XML, do you see that the current fragmentation, example rules and formats, will continue to cause issues under one record too? Or do you share the opinion that one record will facilitate standardization? I think it's a latter one, right? You know, uh, it would facilitate standardization. Um, and, and in today's world, you have a uh, number of formats and number of uh, message versions that is being forwarded uh, when it is passed on to each each and every stakeholder. So I think uh, once it is standardized, it would be one single format, one single version that will uh, land in uh, you know everyone's uh, uh, system, uh, which is which is the beauty of one record actually. Perfect. Um, we actually had another one that was uh, talking about uh, the boot camps. Yeah, when are the next boot camps? So um, actually, uh, for the moment, we don't have any plans, and that's uh, very simple because it's summer holidays everywhere. So we uh, we tend to not organize anything usually in the July and August timeframe, but uh, we're looking at uh, starting everything in the new year in um, in September. So. Uh, we will announce when uh, there are boot camps, so don't worry about that. Uh, we have another question for uh, Jackson. Uh, based on your experience, what do you think is the most critical element to ensure that the One Record initiative will be successful? I I think the major element is uh, how good is your telco team. Uh, no matter cargo in XML. And one record, the most complex part is the technical uh, solution. As long as you have a very good IT team, handle all the data change, store the major data in your one record platform, then you are good. All you need to do is the remaining rollout job from the business side. That's my answer. Thank you very much. And staying on the IT subject, uh, this one is uh, for AJ. Uh, did the PubSub concept work well for you? Uh, I won't say completely worked well, but uh, there was uh, initial hiccups, uh, interpretation issues. Um, but then uh, eventually, uh, I mean, there, there was a lot of coordination between us and the uh, task force as well as the data model group. Um, and the API security group to to get this um, you know sorted out. So basically, um, and we have given the learnings as well as part of the uh, group itself. So it was not a smooth ride, but yes, um, as 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 anyone would expect during the initial stages, the teething issues were there, uh, basically on the interpretation uh, side, but it was it was okay, eventually. Perfect. So we have. Uh one that, well, actually I'll take the next couple. Uh, how can I practically join a pilot? Well, so that one, uh, the, the, the simple answer is first, have a look at our website and see which one you would like to join and then get in touch with us. Uh, the reason why we can't put as well too much information is as well with the GDPR, so we can't put everybody's contacts, but uh, if you get in touch with us, we can put you uh, in contact with the, the pilots and get you started, so yes. Get in touch with us is the main answer. And then uh, we have a couple more questions which are very linked, a bit, uh, asking the same thing. Uh, it's all about yeah, seeing uh, live uh, uh, demonstrations and uh, production ready applications. So there is a, a multitude of answers to that one. Um, the, this year, the, our plan was to actually have a uh, developer portal where we could do that. Uh, as you can understand, we've had a, a bit of delay due to uh, uh, COVID. So uh, the, project, the project has been pushed back a little bit, but the aim is actually to, to work with the hackathon. And uh, definitely during the hackathon, uh, actually the people create demos because they, they touch on uh, dummy data, but they call and they do requests to uh, the APIs. So they actually do uh, a live demo. So uh, my answer to that would be, Join the hackathon if you want to actually participate in it, or actually look out for the uh, hackathon dedicated webinar that's going to be happening during the digital cargo conference. So that's where you will actually get to see some uh, some live demos and uh, 
actually uh, uh, ready-made applications which are actually done in 28 hours of coding. So it also proves that it's very simple, it's not complicated, and uh, it can be done. So that's uh, the main thing. Um, I don't see any other questions. So with that, uh, I would like to pass the floor over to Hank for some uh, final words. Well then. Uh... Okay, we're doing this the old fashioned way. All right, very good. Um, I'm sure there are a lot more questions actually, uh, but, but a lot of it was discussed already during this panel, which I thought was very interesting. And uh, thank you very much to, uh, to Klaas, to AJ, and to Jackson, and to yourself, Arno, uh, for organizing this particular uh, webinar on, on the pilots. Um, a big thank you to all of you that are, are still with us uh, now. This is a holiday period, and uh, I'm really impressed at the number of attendees of these inside webinars all along, including today. And so for those of you that have followed most of them before, many, many thanks for doing so. Uh, we have seen that there are quite a few um, people also watching the recordings, because these are recorded, as you know. And so, uh, so those that are on holidays uh, and that couldn't make time for this, which is, which is natural, uh, most of them will actually be watching this afterwards, so that, that, that's really welcome too. Um, as you said, uh, lots of stuff coming up. You know, we have the hackathon, we have the Digital Cargo Conference, and, and this goes on, this doesn't stop. Um, it's really great to see someone like Jackson, who's dedicated a big chunk of his career to digitalization, to e-fray, to e our bill, and at the end of it, to one record. Um, this is what happens. This, this never stops. The, the need to progress, uh, on one hand, obviously paperless cargo, but, but one record takes us far beyond that. Uh, and that won't stop either. I mean, someday I will retire, someday you will retire, this just goes on. So it's great to be a part of this. Uh, it's great for you to be part of this uh, as attendees, as co-presenters as well. And so big thank you. Looking forward, really, to seeing you all at the next events. Um, honestly, the hackathon, if you can, join it. it, it it's high energy, high results, high everything. And the Digital Cargo Conference is also going to be a series of webinars, which will include stuff about this as well. Um, any last words from you, Arno? No, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yes, I think the most important takeaway is actually just get in touch, get on board, try it out. And uh, we're happy to help everybody to to to, to get on board the one record uh, wagon. So. Okay, very good. Any last words from our speakers from uh, uh, class? Anything you'd like to add to this? Uh, no, thank you, um, Hank. I think you brought the umbrella of everything. And uh, yes, we are looking forward to next year, to the end of this year, and let's see where we are going with this whole journey. Thank you very much. Uh, Jackson, anything from you? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation as a speaker as in the panel. I, I want to say ITA has done a very great job to run these webinars. I think the webinars is very useful for the cargo industry. Thank you for that. Thank you. And AJ? Um, I mean, you have wrapped it up uh, uh, appropriately, so uh, nothing much from my side, but except uh, thanks very much uh, for the invite and plus uh, hopefully um, and, and for sure with Taita support, uh, we should be able to do a few more pilots. Okay. Thank you to all of you. And you know what? Um, probably the biggest thank you, and that includes the attendees as well, is for those of you participating in these pilots. Um, on one hand, you could say this is a lot of fun because we are progressing, we're making progress, but it's also a lot of hard work and it also requires commitment from you and your company. So I appreciate that very much. Um, in spite of COVID, this stuff goes on. It's moving on. We're seeing a lot of progress. The webinars, as you can imagine, we didn't plan to do them at the start of the year. Actually, we had planned to do a big conference around the topic. And, and in the end, I think on our side, we felt these webinars were actually better almost than a conference because it allows for a larger participation from around the world as people that are joining these webinars 
all the way from, from, from China, from Australia, Europe, of course, or the America. So it's a much bigger participation. They are recorded, which means that they are a permanent record of these topics. And we find people go back to them and refer to them. So thank you very much. And uh, join these things, join these webinars, join the pilot program, and look forward to seeing you either virtually or in person and to be part of this uh, amazing development. So thank you very much. And with that, I would like to close the webinar. Thank you very much.